guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Laura. For this video, I'm gonna continue sharing with you what and when I am eating on a carnivore diet with my goals of losing weight in mind. I am taking 30 days to completely eliminate snacking, don't eat outside my meal time, and really dial back in on weight loss as my main goal. And so I have already shared with you the first two weeks of that. You can check that video out here, but the order that you watch them in really doesn't matter. I'm hoping that you can take away from this video some ideas and things that you might be able to use to break a stall or just give you some basic meal ideas. I don't think that completely mirroring what and when I am eating uh, is going to give you the exact same results. And you'll see, I'm not gonna get the same results in the second two weeks than I got in the first two weeks would be my guess. But stick around to the end and I'll talk about how much weight I lost over this two weeks, over the 30 days cumulatively, and some lessons that I've learned along the way. Coincidentally for this video, I am starting off again eating beef crosscut short ribs. They've kind of been a weekend treat for me lately. I like to eat something nice and fatty and just eat what I want and then incorporate fasting to help balance out my weight loss. My husband is also a carnivore and he is a little different where he wants to eat every day. He doesn't enjoy doing 48 hour fasts as often. And so he chooses to eat a little different leaner cuts. He also is the budget balancer. And so while I tend to go for more expensive cuts of meat, he is happy happy just eating whatever is on sale that week. And so top sirloin is three forty-seven at our local grocery store this week. And so he has picked out some giant top sirloin steaks for him to enjoy while I am choosing to eat the fattier cross cut short ribs. These were so fatty. I could only eat six ribs before I just got too full. I have a hard time eating a large volume of anything that's this fatty, which is a good thing. I am in line at the drive through at In-N-Out Burger. It is 10.30 in the morning and I am really hungry. I woke up hungry this morning and just didn't want to wait any longer. I have some meetings that are going to push me through lunch. So my option was eat early or wait and eat much later than this. I'm ready to take your order whenever you're ready to give it to me. Can I have two Flying Dutchman, please? And then eight plain meat patties? Would you like any fries today? No, thanks. Okay, and is the salt okay on those meat patties? Yes, please. Wonderful, so I have two flying dutchmans of eight meat patties. Will you be doing those to your car today? Yes. Okay, that'll be fourteen forty nine at that first window, please. Thank you. You're welcome, okay, okay, thank you. A flying Dutchman is two patties and two pieces of cheese, and then I got the rest just plain patties with salt only. In-N-Out is one of the few places that I will actually order cheese on my burgers because they make their own homemade American cheese. So I know it's not quite as processed. Whether or not you get cheese at McDonald's or Wendy's is really just gonna depend on your goals, which is why at a lot of those places, I just get plain beef patties, but they are 100% beef. You don't have to worry about that. Also, in and outs patties are only two ounces, so even though I'm eating 12 patties and four slices of cheese, it's not really quite as much as you think it is. It's about a pound and a half of beef, and burger patties tend to be pretty lean, so that's why I added a little bit of cheese. Hi, again. Just one. Thank you. You too. meat. I have no food to report for today. If you guys follow me on Instagram, you know that we organized a group 48 hour fast. And so there's a big group of us that our goal is to fast for 48 hours. A lot of people are going the whole 48 with me. And there's a lot of people who are going just as long as they feel comfortable. There's no failing in ending a fast earlier than planned, as long as you're eating meat or something nutritious. Lots of people plan to go 48 hours and then you feel hungry, you get stressed and you just decide to eat early. And as long as that steak or eggs or something nutritious for your body, there's, that's not a fail at all. That's just simply a change of plans. And you guys have seen from my previous videos that I do that a lot. I might plan to fast and just my body and my mind is not in the right place for it. And so I eat. The only failing is like pushing yourself so far that you stress yourself out and then you eat a bunch of donuts. This time I'm feeling great. I'm not hungry. I'm going to continue fasting until lunch tomorrow. For lunch today, I am having, um, several different things. I am eating some bacon, 
grilled shrimp with lots of butter on it, and then about 12 ounces of lean top sirloin that I also added a lot of butter to it. I'll put some big, thick, coarse salt on top of everything and chow down. I am eating twice today. <gasps> if you can believe it, I never eat twice. I am meeting some friends later at a barbecue place. It's That's not until like, gonna be like five o'clock and it's one o'clock and I am starving. So I just can't wait that long to eat. So I'm gonna eat some bacon and eggs right now. I'm gonna have four eggs and a bunch of bacon. And then when I go out tonight, I will eat a lot less food, obviously. I'm gonna probably get a half a pound of brisket. Uh, I'd rather eat only a little bit of brisket when I go out later just to be social and have fun with my friends, but really get the bulk of my food in right now with bacon and eggs. I'm using some bacon grease and butter, and I will probably will put a little bit of shredded cheese into my eggs just to make it taste good. Barbecue restaurants are a really great, easy option for eating out on a carnivore diet. So for my second meal today, I am meeting some friends and we're gonna eat some brisket. I am careful of which places that I go to just because some of them use a lot of spices and that kind of gets my stomach in a funk, but this place just uses salt and pepper. So I'm gonna eat some brisket. Here we go. For here. I ended up not eating anything today. I think because I ate so late yesterday and then also I just have had a really busy day. I have been teaching a virtual conference the last couple days for my real job. And so I didn't finish that until well after lunchtime. And by that point, I just was exhausted and tired and not really thinking about food. Um, my mom flew into town this afternoon. So this evening we've been hectic playing with grandma and we have lots of good things planned to eat for tomorrow, steaks and some cheeses, and I think I'll just wait and eat tomorrow and save up and be nice and hungry for that feast we're gonna have. For my one meal today, I am eating all the food. I am having a over one pound ribeye. I'm gonna eat some shrimp, I'm gonna eat some halloumi cheese, I'm gonna put some butter on everything, and I'm just gonna eat until I'm stuffed and feeling good. All right, here we have our epic feast. We got New York strips. Grandma's having all kinds of stuff, shrimp and steak. Kids are eating sloppy joe meat. Lunch today, I ate a lot. We took advantage of my mom being in town and she watched the kids while Chris and I went on a double date with some friends to Fogo de Chao for lunch, which is an unlimited Brazilian steakhouse where they walk around and give you all the meats. Um, I didn't do a lot of pictures and videos because I was obviously socializing and enjoying my time with friends, but we had a fantastic time um, and I will not be hungry for a very long time. Today is Labor Day and we are headed over to some friend's house to swim and have a cookout all day. And obviously going to somebody else's house, you have less control over what you're gonna eat. So I just called her and said, hey, we'd love to bring some meat to throw on the grill. And so we got a bunch of flank steak uh, I'm bringing some shredded cheese and some sour cream so that people can have like fajitas uh, or we can just eat the meat. But whenever we go to somebody's house, I just bring my own cooler. I got my own knife, bring in my own salt, and we are truly prepared to make sure we can stay on track. All right, this is a new one even for me, but I am meeting my friend in about half an hour to get some wings. Uh, we wanted to have lunch together today and so we decided on this wing place, which is great. I love wings. It's a really easy go-to out carnivore option. The only problem is I want to fast after this and so I want to eat enough to where I'm not gonna be hungry uh, soon after and I don't have time to eat later. Wings really aren't gonna cut it. This place has burgers, but they don't do patties a la carte. So I don't wanna pay like eight to $12 for a pub burger patty. Like it's just gonna end up being way too expensive for me to eat enough food. So I went through In-N-Out and I got a bunch of burger patties and I'm gonna sit in the car and eat some burger patties and then I'm gonna go in and have a nice relaxing lunch with my friend and enjoy some wings and be social and not feel this pressure to like eat enough or spend a ton and then I'll fast. So this is new, even for me. Lunch today, I ended up eating nothing. Um, I ate so much over the weekend. We had those two really big feast days and then the holiday 
Yesterday I had two smaller meals, but just eating twice. Uh, I figured kind of today was a good day to balance out how I've been eating the last few days. So with some people on Instagram, I have decided to do a 48 hour fast, which for me just means I eat nothing and I drink water. Uh, I just don't like coffee, but some people do like black coffee when they fast. I just use water and if I need some electrolytes, I put some salt in it. And that is basically it. I am super excited to break my fast. Today for lunch, I am having these two little baby ribeyes. Uh, normally I eat the giant thick Costco ribeyes that are a pound and a half a piece almost. These two combined are only 0.88 pounds, so less than one pound. I will put some butter on it, but that's still not enough food for me for the day. And I was trying to think of what else I wanted to go with it. I have a bunch of canned chicken that I bought in March or April when the grocery store shelves were completely empty and you didn't know how long that was gonna last. So as a precaution, I bought canned chicken and I made chicken salad, which I have not had in years. I used to make this all the time back in my keto days uh, and wrap it in low carb tortillas or just lettuce wraps. But now I kept it carnivore and I did mayo. Um, you can buy cleaner mayonnaises, right? There's a Primal Kitchen mayonnaise that's made from avocado oil. I do wanna try making my own bacon mayonnaise, um, but I have not gotten that far yet. I put in some salt, pepper, a little adobo for some seasoning, a little dollop of sour cream, and then I chopped up a whole bunch of bacon to go with it. And I have some pork rinds and I'm gonna scoop it and have two little baby steaks and a side of carnivore nachos. Okay, I have my steaks with a little salt and butter, and then I have my carnivore chicken salad, and then I can use the pork rinds to dip it in, or actually I forgot, we have some of these the kids usually eat. These would be good scoopers for that too. For my one meal today, I'm having almost exactly what I had yesterday, but I'm gonna have skirt steak. So this is an almost one pound grilled skirt steak. I'm not gonna put butter on it. I'll use a little feta cheese with it. And then I am gonna have some more of that chicken salad that I made and pork rinds. Today is Saturday and I have been running errands all morning, but we are making bone in skin on chicken thighs for our meal. We brined them for a couple hours this morning with eight cups of water and four tablespoons of salt and just let them soak in a big bowl for uh, about two and a half hours. And then we threw them on the smoker at a low temperature for an hour. And then we cranked them up to 425 right there at the end to get them nice and crispy. And I think that's all I'm gonna eat today. I'm just gonna eat chicken and we will see. Chicken doesn't usually tend to satisfy me for a long period of time, but I'm actually really excited about what I'm eating tomorrow. So I don't mind uh, being hungry, but if I end up getting hungry later, I'll eat. <coughs> Mm. The chicken came out fantastic. Next time we might brine it for about four to five hours instead. I ended up eating three and a half thighs and a little bit of feta cheese. I never got hungry again yesterday, so I didn't eat anything after my chicken for lunch, but I woke up this morning very hungry, which is great because for lunch I am having a giant tomahawk ribeye because this is so thick i'm gonna cook it using a reverse sear method unless you just wanted to sear the outside and keep everything inside really raw i think this is the best method to do it to give me a medium rare finish you could do it in the oven you could watch an entire video that i have on how to do a reverse sear i am going to put it in the smoker and then i'm going to finish it on the auto wild today with every piece of meat that I cook, I really just go by the temperature of it. So I have a Bluetooth meat thermometer inside right now, and I'm just keeping an eye on the app. When it is, because this is so thick, when it's at like 110 degrees Fahrenheit internal temperature, I will pull it off and start that sear process. I'm looking for a final resting temperature of 130 degrees. And here we go, giant 
two and a half pound tomahawk ribeye minus the bone. There's about two pounds of meat here, so we'll see how much of this I can chow down on. This came out perfect for me. If you wanted yours more done than this, you could just bump up all those temperatures by about 10 degrees. All right, I ended up giving my husband about six ounces of that steak, but I ate the rest and I saved enough room to chew on the bone. We have finally made it to day 30 and today is the last day that I'm gonna be filming this 30 days of weight loss. So I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna eat. I actually planned on not eating. I was gonna fast. I was at the office all morning. I used my lunch break to go shopping, but by the time I got home, I had worked up an appetite. So my husband graciously cooked me a, oh, probably a little over one pound um, flat meat, which is like skirt steak. And then I still have some of that leftover chicken salad. So I'll probably eat about a cup of this and stick around tomorrow morning. I'm gonna weigh in, see how the 30 days went and we'll talk about all my results. Here we are at the end of 30 days, and I have to say that I am really thrilled um, with my results and then also just the way that I feel. In this two weeks, so the two weeks that you just watched in this video, I lost five pounds. Now, let, before I say that, let me say, until three days ago, the first 12 days of this video, and actually the last like three of the previous video. So for a full two weeks, I lost zero pounds, zero. It was very stressful for me. Honestly, as of three days ago, I was like, well, this is a good learning experience for this video. I can just talk about the fact that like, I'm my goal is weight loss and I didn't lose any weight over these two weeks. And I thought my takeaways from this video were gonna be about how like you can do everything right and sometimes just not lose weight. Now. Something happened in my body. I released some stress. I released some weight. And over the last three days, whew, five pounds. Um, I think that there's a part of me that I really think my body only likes to release weight at a certain time of month because when I go back now and, and track, I tend to like have these days where I lose like three to five pounds over the course of a week and then nothing for a couple of weeks. If you remember back to that first video, I lost nine pounds in those first 16 days. And then in this 14 days, I lost five pounds. So over the course of 30 days, I have lost 15 pounds. We're gonna time out here for a second. And this is future me editing this video. And I wanna assure you that I am aware that nine plus five actually equals 14. And not 15, like I just said, and like I will continue to say about eight more times. Apparently I rounded up. We're just gonna go with it and let me have that moment. Let's watch my obliviousness and enjoy it. Back to the show. I don't share that number to try to get you to mimic that or to mirror that. It's just to show you where my body is. That first nine pounds, a lot of that was water weight, right? This last five pounds is a lot more fat and a lot more grinding it out, which is why it took me longer. We have to look at the big picture. I want, this is my biggest takeaway from all of this is look at bigger pictures. We can't be tracking weight day by day and making a decision and even week by week. Because if I was tracking weight week by week, I would have had two full weeks where I lost zero pounds. And yet over the course of this month, I lost 15 pounds. I have had so many times in my life where I get to the end of a week and I lost no weight. I get to the end of two weeks and I lost no weight. And I tell myself that lie of like, well, maybe I just need a cheat day to remind my body what it's fighting. And then I'll have a cheat day and get back on track again. When all you're doing is gaining weight and setting yourself back even more. And for me, bringing up all those cravings again. So the, the frustration of a stall or what I perceive as a stall, and if we can logically give other people advice, we know two weeks is not really a stall. There's no reason to set yourself back by having a cheat day because you think it's actually gonna help you lose more weight, because it's not. The other thing is now I've lost 15 pounds. I'm sitting here going, hey, 15 pounds, yeah. Guess what, I deserve a cheat day. That's the other thing I have done so many times in my life is get to the end of the month and say, well, my goal was 30 days and I lost 15 pounds. I deserve some cookies <laughs> or I deserve a keto treat for me would get me off track, right? I deserve whatever that food is. 
those are some big things that I have done in the past, years past, uh, and things that would get me off track. As you can see, I am not somebody who tracks macros. I by far did not eat the same macros every day. We saw days where I feasted and I ate two pounds of meat plus a bunch of cheese plus a bunch of fat. And then I had days like yesterday where I ate a pound of meat and some leaner chicken. And then I have days where I fast completely and other days where I feast. That type of mentality works for me. It gives me flexibility to live my life that I wanna live, to be social, to eat what sounds good to me and to balance things out with fasting. There are a lot of people who don't like that and do a lot better with setting some macros, being consistent, eating the same thing every day or eating the same macros every day. Um, and I think either one of those things are fine. You really just have to find what works for you. What I do hope that you take away from this video is just a challenge to go all in, to you know, give yourself 30 days, to really commit to something, to a change, to positive changes, and see where you're at at the end of that time. Comment down below on any goals that you have and we can check back in in 30 days and hold you accountable. Don't wait for a Monday and don't wait for the first of the month. Whatever today is, today is the day that you can get started and make some changes in your own life. I appreciate all of the support. Thank you guys for subscribing and for following along and let me know what else I can share that would be helpful to you. Thanks guys.